ויאמר אדוני אל אברהם, לך לך מעט מעצך וממולדתך ומבית אביך אל הארץ אשר אראך. ואעשך לגוי גדול, ואברך, ואגדלה שמך, ואהיה ברכה. ואברך מברכך, ומקללך האור. ונברכו בך כל משפחות האדמה. Now let's read and define each word. ויאמר, ויאמר means and he said. The accent mark is on יו because of this trope mark right here, מפח. ויאמר. Because of this yud right here, this yud is a prefix. It makes it a uh, third person. And so that's, that means it's he, third, pers third person male. Um, and this is singular. And he said, the va right here is and, okay? And this is from the root amar, which means um, he said, okay? So vayomer, and he said. And then we have um, yud he which is Hashem or the sacred name which speaks of his eternal nature and all mighty, powerful, um, omnip omnipotent nature. El right here means two, El, two. And then we have Avram, which is, um, which is the name that Abraham had before um, Hashem changed it to Avraham. And the root of um, Avram's name actually has to do with um, being great, greatness. Okay, so let means go or walk. Okay, and lecha means two or four. The le part means two or four. And this ha part means you or yourself. Okay, even though they're... Um, they actually spelled the same exact way in um, in Hebrew because in the Torah um, there are no vowel points, but they they do mean two different things. That this is um, one root, and this is um, a combination of this prefix le, which is actually short for l, and then um, ha is a suffix for you or yourself. Okay. Um, this is me artsecha. Me means from. Um, the root here is edits, which means land, right here. And then ha means your, again, just like this ha means your or yourself. This ha right here also means your. Okay. Umi molatecha. This means and. U means and. Me is from. Um, this mo, molad. Uh, actually just molad. Um, this is, um, has to do with uh, birth, okay? And this ha part means your, okay? So for, for, and from the place of your birth is what this um, means. It has various prefixes and suffixes and the root has to do with birth, okay? And then we have umi bait. U means and. Um, me means from and bait is house, okay? We say bait because we want to say house of, okay? Umi bait and from the house of. And then we have avicha. Av is father. The um, cha part means your, okay? Avicha is your father. Um, that's, and see the, all the chas here, cha, cha. They all mean um, your or you or yourself. Okay, and then we have L, L again, which means two, just like this one right here. And then we have Ha Aretz, Ha means the, 
and audits is land. And it's the same root as right here, where right here where we say me artsefa, okay? Audits right here. So without any prefix, it would just be edits. But because we have the ha prefix, it's changed to audits, ha audits, okay? Asher means who, that, or which. Here we'll say that. And are means I will show. And then ha part means you. So are ha, I will show you, I will show to you. Okay. So, and said Hashem, or Hashem said to Avram, El Avram, Bayomer Aronai, El Avram, Lech Lecha, go for yourself, or go to yourself, Me'artsecha, from your land, Umi Moladtecha, and from the place of your birth, Umi Beit, and from the house of Avicha, your father, El Haaretz, oh, sorry, excuse me, El Haaretz, to the land, Asher, that Ar Echa, I will show you. And this, this, um, the root starts here with Resh, and this A right here is I, I will show you, okay? And then the Ha part, uh, actually it's Ar Echa, not Ha, I, um, I didn't see the, the Gesh before, but it still means the same thing, it still means you, okay? Just like Ha here and Ha here, this is a Kaf Sofit, which is actually the same letters, just pronounced a little bit differently. Okay, this is Ka, and this is Ka. Okay, so Hashem is speaking here to Avram, and he says, go for yourself or to yourself. So um, you can translate this as for yourself, meaning um, do it on your own, right? You're going to have to do this on your own. You're going to have to be the main driving force in this journey that I'm that I'm that I'm putting you on but um some a kabbalistic interpretation would be go to yourself meaning this journey will be to you a journey of self discovery a journey to who you truly are or what who you're who you are destined to be okay and then it says me artsecha um from your land um, um, and from your birth birthplace. Now, um, I was reading Rashi, and Rashi poses the question: Didn't didn't he didn't um, didn't Avram already um, journey away from his land and from his birthplace with his father? And yes, um, he might have. But the point here is, um, you know, Rashi says that that he had to go even further. And not only further, but also umi beit from the house of Avicha, your father. So not only do you have to go even further away, but you even have to leave your father behind, whom you have been traveling with um, up until now. And so sometimes when Hashem asks us to do something, he may require us to leave behind what we knew um, as a child, in order to walk closer to him, this is especially true for people who um, who came from families who are not religious, and then they become religious, and their maybe their parents are atheists or just not very observant or a different religion altogether. Sometimes we have to distance ourselves. Not not necessarily that we have to cut them off completely, but you know, there's some people, some family members that you know, may really, really bring us down in our walk with Hashem. Just be very, um, just, they can be very nasty, you know, um, degrading us for wanting to keep God's ways. It's very, under, it's very, I think it's very hard to understand Torah if, if, if you don't believe in it. And so if you don't believe in Torah, it just sounds like foolishness. It just sounds like nonsense. And so, of course, you're going to make fun of it. And you're not going to want, um, you know, possibly your friends to follow it. Um, or your or your family or your loved ones. And so um, even though our family and friends may love us, you know, they may be ridiculing us or hurting us out of love. But it's still hurtful and it's still wrong. And so sometimes we have to distance ourselves to some degree, you know, maybe not completely, but to some degree. 
And then it says, El Haaretz Asher Areka. So to the land that I will show you. And so there is, you know, there, there is a goal, there is a destination that we are going to. And, you know, this, this destination as Jews, we believe this is, first of all, um, the land of Israel, especially in the Messianic era, you know, when, when Jews will be gathered um, back to Israel as is prophesied in the Bible. And also in the Olam Haba, the world to come, where, um, you know, it's it, the, it's gonna, there's going to be like a um, a new world, right? The Olam Haba, the world to come, a different world, one that is free of suffering and pain, um, and and evil. So this is a, this is the true destination. And Avram, although he saw the land, he never saw it given to him, but in faith he knew that it would be given to him. It would be given to his seed, his offspring, and also to him in the resurrection. And that is our hope as well. Okay, next verse. Ve'e'escha. Ve'e'escha, which means, and I will make you. The V right here is and. The E right here is I. Ha right here is you. And then this in the middle is os, um, um Asa is the root, right? The escha, and I will make you legoi as as a nation or into a nation. Le is into, and goi is nation. Gadol means great. I will make you into a great nation. Va'avarecha, va'avarecha, and this means and I will bless you. Va means and av uh, is I again. The root is barach, which is um, he blessed. And then the cha part again means you. Okay, so va avarech cha. They will bless you. And then we have va agadela. Va agadela, which means and I will make great. Okay, va is and. Um, the a here again means I. This is gadol which means great. It's just, it's the same as this right here. It's the same root. Gimel Dalit Lamed. Great. So we have that root here. Gadol. And then Ah. So this is just part of, I will make great. Okay. Make what great? Shemecha. I will make great your name. Shem is name. And then the Ha part again means your. I'll make your name great. Vehye. And it shall be beracha, a blessing. And so this it here um, is usually inter interpreted interpreted as Avraham. Um, Hashem will make Avraham great, or um, oh, excuse me, uh, it, make his name a blessing. Um, Hashem will make Avraham's name a blessing, or make Avraham a blessing. Okay, there's, um, this is literally, and he shall be. Okay, so what is he? It, this is, you know, it could be it, because in Hebrew, everything is masculine and feminine. Okay, now, um, or it could even refer to the nation, the nation that um, the goy that Hashem will make of Avraham, that is the one that could be, that is being referred to as um, what will be made a blessing. Okay, now um, again, uh, I really liked what Rashi said about this verse. He said that, um, you know, when, when people travel long distance like that, they give up a lot of things. For, first of all, um, they, they give up their, um, they, they give up their ability to make money, their ability to um, be known, their fame, right? And also they give up the ability to um, procreate because they're traveling. And we're talking about like, like a long, like um, travel, like they used to, you know, either by ship or by foot, you know, by camel. Um, it's, it's, it's a very arduous, um, hard travel. It's not like what we have today where we just get on a plane and fly 
or even drive in our car for a few hours and we're there. No, it's not like that. It's, it, it was a very, da- it's, it's a very dangerous thing that Hashem asked Avram to do. It wasn't an easy thing. It wasn't a simple thing at all. So, so Hashem, basically he's saying, you, you, you're not going to be able to procreate on the way. It's going to be very difficult, very hard, right? It's not going to be comfortable. But he says, nevertheless, don't worry. I'm going to make you into a great nation. You will have offspring, even though you might it might be hard to do so while you're traveling. You will, you will, okay. And we're here where it says, you know, and I'll and I'll bless you, and I'll make you, um, I'll make you great. If I remember correctly, um, oh here, this one right here, um, and I'll make great your name i'll make your name great so another thing is you know back in those days if you traveled your reputation is is like it's no more because you 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 establish your reputation in the city or the vicinity that you live in and then when you go to a new place you're a nobody again because you know they didn't have media they didn't have social media they didn't have internet they didn't have tv they didn't even have newspaper so if you moved and to a new place, most likely, unless you were, you know, a king of a bordering nation, you were a nobody. No one knew you. No one cared about you. No one respected you like they might have in your former land. So, but nevertheless, Hashem is telling him, I'm going to make your name great. Don't worry. You're going to establish a reputation again. Um, and it shall be a blessing. Okay. So basically what, God is saying here is okay. So this the last part, you know, that Rashi says is you know you also when you travel you um, you have to spend a lot of money and use a lot of resources and also even lose a lot of resources. For example, if you had farmland and, and vineyards and um, a lot of possessions, you might not be able to carry it all. And the land, you certainly just you have to give it up. Um, and if you can't find a buyer, well, you know, you just lost it. So, but nevertheless, he says, you know, this part right here, I will bless you. Don't worry. I will bless you. And so I think that makes a lot of sense to me now, um, after I read Rashi, because he's basically saying, you know, Avram, do this crazy thing, do this crazy thing, which is leave everything you know and love and are comfortable with. And that has made you successful and rich and popular. Leave all of that behind for me and leave it for a place that I'm going to show you. He didn't, God didn't even show him yet. He just took his word and said, I'm going to show you something wonderful. And I'm going to bless you and I'm going to give you all these things. But you don't know what it's going to be yet. But you know what? Don't worry. I'm going to take care of you. You're going to have a ton of blessings. You're going to establish your reputation even though you have so much now, you're going to lose it all, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to multiply it. And I'd say, you know, a thousandfold, maybe a millionfold, because look, because Abraham, you know, because Abraham followed um, God's, God's instruction, he is the father of many nations and he is known all across the world and his seed and his offspring are indeed a blessing to the whole entire earth. And so, you know, we too, when, when God calls us to do something hard and to give up something, know that whatever we lose for his sake, we will gain so much more if we obey him. Last verse for today. Va'avarecha, which means, and I will bless. Va is and, a here is I and varecha is will bless, okay, and I will bless. Bracha, a bracha is a blessing, okay. Um, me me and that means me is like um those who, okay, and then we have um the um varech right here or barach, which is the root for bless, right? And then the ha part again is uh, you, okay? So those who bless you. Um, so I will bless 
the blessers of you, okay? Those who bless you. And then we have um kalel cha, um kalel cha, which means and those who curse you. We have u means and again, and the mem right here means those, okay? And then uh, the the kalel part is um, curse. And then we have cha again, which means you. Okay, and then we here we have aor, I will curse. So a is I again. Okay, so I will curse. And then venivrehu, and they shall be blessed. Okay, v is and, um, and niv niv nivrech right here. This this um, root the um, like bracha, right? It's the same root, same as this and this. Okay, same root. Vet resh chaf, right? You see it here too, right? And this part is like instead of blessing, they will be blessed. That's what the noon does here. It makes it um, like causative. I will cause them to be blessed. Okay, and this u part makes it plural. They, they. Okay, and they shall be, be and they shall be blessed. Vecha means in you. V is in. Cha is you. Kol means all. Okay. I can also mean each or every or entire or total. Okay, but here it means all. Mishpechot is families. Mishpacha is family. Uh, mishpachot is families. Okay. Ha'adama. And here is, means, this can be interpreted as the ground of the earth. Now, sometimes ha'aretz is used for the earth. But here it's, um, uh, it's it's a different root. It's not that's not the same word as land. It's actually the word for ground, which is the same root as the word for Adam. So I, I think it's calling um, um, the calling to mind um, the sons of Adam, right? All humanity, um, because as I've said before. Uh, ben Adam means human being, right? Son of Adam. Ben Adam, son of Adam. Be, that's how you say human being in Hebrew, even modern Hebrew. Okay, so I think this is like the ultimate blessing because another thing that sometimes happens when we walk in obedience to God is we can be in danger. You know, a lot of times people don't like people who are religious and like people who follow God and certainly, you know, the nations have shown that they do not like Jews. Right. And so Hashem here promises Abraham that not only will he protect him and, um, and, you know, in addition to all those blessings that he promised him earlier, but that he will also judge all the nations, all the families of the earth, based on whether or not they bless or curse him and his offspring of course so that is a huge blessing he so he in essence avram who became avraham and his seed became so profoundly important to the whole entire world that the whole world will be either blessed or cursed based on whether or not they bless or curse Avraham and the great nation that he will become. So there's so many, it's just so incredible, these promises. There's so many things that God promises to us when we walk in obedience to him. And it's an encouragement. And it may seem like we're giving up so much, you know, when, when we start following his ways and we, when we dedicate our lives to him to truth, to, to justice, to mercy, to, um, to helping the poor, the needy, you know, et cetera. But this is how we become actually protected and blessed and fruitful and, and how we become part of his representation on earth, you know, when we walk in his ways and we, we do his will. And we need not fear. We need not fear because Hashem promises that he will bless us when we obey him. I would like to read the 
English version for Lech Lecha, the first Aliyah, and it starts in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. And this is from Rabbi Arya Kaplan's um, interpretation called the Living Torah. It says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, Lech Lecha, Aliyah 1, God said to Abram, Go away from your land, from your birthplace, and from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you great. You shall become a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And he who curses you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Abram went as God had directed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all their belongings, as well as the people they had gathered. And they left heading toward Canaan. When they came to Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as the area of Shechem, coming to the plain of Moreh. The Canaanites, or Kenaani, were then in the land. God appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your offspring. Abram built an altar there to God who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the mountains east of Bethel. He set up his tent with Bethel to the west and I to the east. He built an altar there and called in God's name. Abram then continued on his way, moving steadily toward the south. So as one last note um, regarding that passage, in um, verse 5, it says that, let's see, from the beginning it says, Avram took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all their belongings, as well as the people they had gathered. Now, in the Hebrew, it doesn't exactly say that, okay? It says, um, for people they had gathered, it says, Hanefesh Asher Asu. Hanefesh is referring to souls, right? We talked about this earlier. Um, and then Asher is um, that, and asu means um, they made, okay? So it's talking about the souls that they made. Um, it's not gathered, but made. It's a very interesting way to say it. It could have said, you know, some people say that it's talking about their servants, but you don't necessarily make servants. You acquire them, right? You purchase them. That would be a more normal word to say, but it says the souls that they made. And so the sages say, and um, you can find this in Rashi, um, is they say that it's talking about the people who they converted to God's cause. The people that followed Avram because they saw that God was with him and that he was walking with God and following God and obeying God and that God had given him a vision, a great vision, a vision of the future. And they wanted to be a part of that. They wanted to be in obedience to God, just like Avram was. And so it's known in Judaism that, that Av Avraham, that he was a soul winner, so to speak. He made souls, as this, as this um, verse says. He converted people to the knowledge of the living God and, and taught them to be obedient to him, just as he was. And so that's why... One of the reasons why he is considered the father of Israel, the Jewish people, but not only the, the Jewish people, but a father of many nations. Avram was just such an awesome example of everything that we should be. We should be obedient. We should trust in God to bless us. And we should walk in obedience to Hashem, but not only in obedience for ourselves, but to also win other people to the knowledge of the living God so that they too can share in the same blessings that we do and that we will.
Thank you so much for learning Hebrew with me. And I hope you can visit my website, my website and click on this button right here, sign up to my email list so I can email you the newest lessons on Hebrew, Torah, and Judaism. And also visit my website for holistic health and healing at www.aruka.com. I am an herbalist and health coach, and I believe that the creator of heaven and earth is also the great physician, and he can heal everything from sickness and disease to broken hearts and homes. If you go to my website and click on this button right here, um, it's going to take you to a form where you can download my free ebook right now, Intermittent Fasting Formula. Shalom.